There are many reasons why a lot of people, especially in the media, in the mainstream, moderate to liberal media especially, were surprised that Donald Trump ultimately won the 2016 presidential election and will be the next president of the United States. And one of the common refrains that you heard all throughout Tuesday night, election night, as the results started to pull, pour in, were that the polls were wrong. And how could the polls be so wrong? And maybe we need to question what the purpose of point is for polls and whether or not they are a flawed way of trying to get an accurate picture of what's actually going down in the presidential race and all of this. And this is a discussion we can always get into every four years, but it seems like, especially with how much both conservative and moderate and also the liberal media are trying to push this out as a talking point and a major narrative and selling point as to why a Donald Trump presidency is going to happen. What, what happens is a lot of people start to believe this and start to buy this. And, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of those in the polling business are going to have to answer in theory for what happened. But were they really that far off? Was the data wrong? Were the pollsters wrong? Or were the people and the media's interpretation of the statistics, the numbers, the figures wrong? You know, if the numbers are there, but we misread them and misinterpret them and misunderstand them, then that's not shame on the pollsters. That's shame on us and most certainly shame on the media. So let's take a look here for a few minutes, and I've got some specific examples of different states and the polling and so on and so forth, and you know, this will kind of hopefully help paint a picture of whether or not the polls really got it that wrong, or if people are really making a mountain out of a molehill as a way to try and excuse what the fuck just happened. Okay, so again, one of the major narratives about the whole polling thing is that Many of the polls were really pointing towards a Hillary Clinton victory, and obviously a, a somewhat sizable victory. You know, you had a lot of projections. Even mine was for over 300 electoral votes for Hillary Clinton, and you know, some of what I used for that was some of the polling data. But I'm not going to blame the polls as much as I am going to blame my misinterpretation from them. Here's what I mean. Well, let's look at a few states here some really important states that Hillary Clinton lost. Let's look at Florida. And the ones I'm going to use are polls that happened anywhere from the Halloween, Halloween weekend up to the eve of the election, because those are the most recent snapshot of what was to come in the election. So I think they're the most timely and the most relevant. In the state of Florida, out of the last five polls run, Three of them were within the margin of error, and here's what I mean. If a poll indicates that Hillary Clinton has a two-point lead, but the margin of error is 3%, what happens is so often is we get caught up in the big number and who's got their name next to the big number that we don't pay attention to what's going on. We don't pay attention to the entire picture. Sure, in theory, based off of the respondents in the sample, Hillary Clinton was ahead by two points, let's just say. But if the margin of error is 3%, what that really means is Hillary Clinton's lead is within the margin of error. That is technically a statistical tie. What that could really mean is that even though Hillary Clinton is polling at 2%, Donald Trump could actually have a 1% lead in the state. And that so often isn't talked about. And look what happened. Donald Trump wins by, I think, about a percent in Florida. So for a poll in Florida that had Hillary Clinton ahead by one point or two, one point or two points or three points, even though Donald Trump won the state, did that necessarily mean that those polls were wrong? No. Sure, like I said, only three out of five were within the margin of error. The other two were not. But that's still more of them being right than being wrong. North Carolina, same thing. Out of the last five polls run in that state, three of them were within the margin of error. If you're projecting a 
one point Hillary victory and Trump wins by two points, or you're projecting a two point Hillary victory and Trump wins by one point, and the margin of error in both of those polls is 3%, then the poll was right. People just misinterpreted the data. And look at Pennsylvania, as close as that state was. The last five polls done in that state, all five of them were within the margin of error. So again, if Hillary Clinton's projected to win by 1% and Trump wins by 1%, the margin of error is somewhere between 2 to 3%. That makes sense. That's why if the number of the lead of the candidate is less than or equal to the margin of error, it's a called a statistical tie. And if anything, the fault lies in the media misinterpreting the data and misreporting the data and what the entire picture means. They should be saying Hillary Clinton has a 2% lead, but it is within the margin of error. Henceforth, it is still a statistical tie, and it is anybody's ballgame in this state. Now, when you talk about Florida and North Carolina and Pennsylvania, even when we saw Hillary Clinton having leads and lots of polls in these states, at the end of the day, you knew that these states were going to be really nip and tuck for Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And could, they could swing either way. They all ultimately swung one way, but they just as easily, all three could have potentially swung the other way. And the polls were largely right at the end of the day on these three states. And I look at other states too, Colorado, a state that Hillary Clinton won by 3%. All the most recent polling was within the margin of error for her victory total. Maybe there was one that had her at 5% or 6%, but again, if the margin of error is 3%, there you go. That's how you get to that number. Nevada, Hillary won that state by about 2.5%. Four of the five polls were within the margin of error. Virginia, Hillary Clinton won by almost 5%. Every single poll out there had her within the margin of error. If a poll had her winning by 7% and she only won by 5 they still got the winner right. And if they've built in a margin of error to kind of say, hey, we're close to right, but we're not going to be perfect, and it's 25 3%, 3.5%, and just because they're not spot, spot on, they're still in the ballpark. Look at Arizona, a state that Trump won by about 4%. The last few polls, every single one of them within the margin of error. And I believe all of them were predicting a Trump victory. Georgia, Trump won by about 6%. Four or five of the last polls were within that same margin of error. You know, you look at Iowa and you could say, well, Trump won that state by 9.5%. There were only a couple polls done late because most people assumed that Donald Trump was going to win that state. But the Des Moines Register, the last poll they ran was within the margin of error. Sure, they shot a little low. I think they were at like 6.5% or 7%, something like that. But still, they were kind of within the margin of error. And Emerson, who ran the other most recent poll in Iowa, they only had Trump winning by three, but they still had Trump winning. So maybe they were low on the number, but they still had the right person. Ohio, Trump wins by 8.6% or so. Two out of the last four polls done in that state were also within the margin of error, and the other two polls that were off still had Trump winning by a point. I mean, the two states I could look to and I could say had the most flawed polling data were Wisconsin and Michigan. That's it. A lot of these other states, and especially the battleground swing states, toss-up states, the states that actually mattered in the whole electoral picture, a lot of the polling was right. New Hampshire, similar type of thing. Wisconsin and Michigan had the most outliers in terms of polls that were just criminally wrong. Like, I'm going to look, I've got the sheet up in front of me. That's what I'm kind of looking at here. It's hard for me to remember every single one of these numbers. I try, but it's hard for me to remember every single one of them. Remington Research, which is a poll that kind of tends to skew Republican anyways, had Hillary in their last poll in that state Beating Trump 49% to 41%. How did that happen? Well, whereas in terms of the actual electorate, the female vote was about 52% of the total vote, uh, they sampled 55% women voters. So they oversampled for a group that was going to break ultimately for Hillary Clinton at the end of the day. Didn't break in the numbers that probably Hillary Clinton hoped and wanted, Um but they oversampled. And sometimes when we look at the polls, some of these polls 
are flawed, yes, and are not that legitimate because maybe we oversample men or we oversample women and we don't get an accurate picture of the true demographics of the entirety of the state. That's very possible. I look at a, the last poll done by Marquette. They had Hillary winning by six, 46 to 40. You had Gary Johnson at 4%, Jill Stein at 3%. They had 6% undecided, but they oversampled Democrats. Democrats were over 45% of the total sample. And that's just not an accurate picture of the percentage of the voters in Wisconsin on Election Day that were registered Democrats. So you're oversampling a group that is naturally going to line up more so with Hillary Clinton than Donald Trump. And we wonder why that poll would be so tragically wrong. And then you look at Wisconsin. There was a Loris poll done. It was only 500 likely voters. And you had Clinton beating Trump 44 to 38. But there was 7% support for Gary Johnson. Yeah, this could be an example where you say there was some hidden Trump voter. Or what could have potentially happened was a lot of the Gary Johnson people changed their mind at the last minute or didn't show up. And maybe some of the people that were undecided in that poll were 9%. It looks like they all pretty much broke for Donald Trump. I mean, how much of that ultimately is the fault of the pollsters? And you look at Michigan, and I look like at uh, public polling or public policy polling, I think it's called PPP. They tend to lean uh, definitely more Democratic, just like Rasmussen and Remington and Trafalgar uh, do on the Republican side. They had Hillary leading in Michigan by five points, 46 to 41. They had Gary Johnson skewing too high at 6%. They had 6% undecided. You know, when you talk about the hidden voters, maybe in this poll the hidden voters are a good portion of that 6% that didn't want to admit that they were going to vote for Donald Trump. Maybe that's it. Or maybe it's just sometimes luck of the damn draw, too, is you happen to get some independents or some Republicans that happen to say they're going to vote for Gary Johnson, and maybe they do, but it's not necessarily representative of what the entire electorate in that state is going to do. Fox 2 in Detroit oversampled Democrats when they gave Hillary a 46 to 41 advantage over Trump. They oversampled Democrats. So yes, you could say, based off some of the examples I gave, especially in Wisconsin and Michigan, due to oversampling women, oversampling Democrats, um, a lot of people giving information that they were undecided when clearly I wouldn't think at that point in time, with less than a week go to the election, I would hope to God not, that 10% of the people in Wisconsin almost were undecided about who the hell they were going to vote for. Come on, you've had over a year to fucking figure it out. So maybe there's something to the Trump voter thing in, in a couple of these polls. But in general, when you look at the entirety of the picture, the polls weren't that off. They weren't that wrong. They weren't perfect, like sniper rifle hitting a quarter from a thousand feet away. But they were pretty effective in terms of shotgun blast. To me, it comes more down to the media and certain people not understanding the data within these polls, the sampling methods used in these polls, and not understanding that the margin of error is there for a reason, because the ultimate number given is not designed to be perfect. It is a picture. It is a range. It is where it sits, but there has to be some variance because there is going to be some built-in variance. And most polls will have some type of margin of error between 2 to 4%. The average typically is 3%. That's typically your average. And you had a lot of polls in Florida, North Carolina, Pennsylvania especially. Uh, the last few polls in the state, there were more of them that were within the margin of error than weren't. Colorado, Nevada, Virginia, Arizona, Georgia, same thing. So ask yourself, based off of that, were the polls really wrong? Or was the way the media interpreted that data or chose not to use the data provided to them to create certain narratives, was that the problem? And was that why so many people were caught off guard and surprised? I tend to lead more towards that than the polls being wrong in this case. They weren't perfect, but they really weren't that bad this time around if you actually go back and look.